Oh, South African women are flying the country flag high, quite literally, after nearly a century. History has been made as uh, SAA welcomes its first captain, or African captain and first officer, uh, Captain Annabel Wundler, and first officer uh, Rafiwe Moretzi joining us to tell us more about their journey. Let's first of all uh, start with uh, those who have joined us in the studio. And first, I'm looking at the photos. <laughs> first of all, congratulations. I want to ask this, though. I want to get the elephant in the room addressed first. Should we be talking about this as a first African female cockpit crew? I would have thought years ago this would have become the norm, not the exception. Good morning. Just tell us who you are and what's the rank you hold. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gareth. Good morning to you and to all the viewers. Um, I'm, my name is Rafilo Moretti. Uh, I'm from a small, beautiful town called Zanin in Limpopo. Love Zanin, by the way. I've been there many times. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And um, I'm a senior first officer at South African Airways. Uh, which is basically a co-pilot. I'm on the Airbus A320, and I'm also the fatigue risk management uh, specialist for the airline. You are a fatigue risk management specialist. What does that mean? It's basically a management role at uh, for one. Of, we have five management ro management roles for pilots in in the airline, and I basically monitor and manage um, fatigue or safety related uh, safety risk related to fatigue, uh, because basically, uh, as you know, pilots and cabin crew members we are shift workers mm. so we work at different times of the day and um, sometimes we do overnight flights though that that affects a circadian rhythm or, or long hours or early mornings so because of that those can um, oh, quite okay. significantly affect uh, fatigue so that's why that's the part that I handle just to ensure that we are operating at adequate uh, levels of alertness when we fly it's, it's, it's like talking to a hero if you ask me every time I talk to a captain <laughs> or a first uh, captain uh, uh, officer let me ask you this as well then I want to go back to my first question question uh, when you get the attention that that you're getting at the moment do you think it's the attention that you should be getting as a first African female cockpit because as I was saying this should be in 2022 this should be the norm not the exception. How do you feel about the attention you're getting? Exactly. Uh, definitely it's been long overdue. Um, I think as much as uh, people we all celebrating it and it's been an incredible moment it's definitely um, it's definitely too late I mean um, I'm, I'm hoping going forward this happens more often mm. and we don't it doesn't have to be a big deal as it is now because uh, there's so many incredible also women of color that are qualified but uh, it's taken so long to get here and um, as you were saying before in terms of on the flight deck it's it's actually no different because we have Annabelle and I have been doing this for quite a number of years she's got over two decades of flying and I have a decade and a half of flying uh, both started in the military mm. and um, it's taken way too long and I think it should have happened years ago mm. so there's definitely still more work to be done it should be something that uh, we should we shouldn't be celebrating anymore because it should be the norm Absolutely. and and I think but I think it was a good thing that it has happened now because I think uh, society can now see that this is something that mm. should be happening every day and shouldn't be celebrated. Uh, the captain, Annabel Wundler, you've mentioned the captain's name already, not with us in studio, but I believe I have Captain Annabel uh, Wundler on Zoom for us this morning. My team are telling me, uh, Captain, good morning to you. I hope you can hear me. I didn't get a chance to test off air with you. Oh, you're not in the cockpit this morning. You're on the ground. That's nice. Yeah. I thought we were going to be doing a live crossing yeah, from the, the, from the air. <laughs> uh, captain Wundler, let me yeah, ask okay. you the same question uh, that I asked. Uh, that I asked Rafilwe as well. Uh, all the attention you're getting, is this something you were hoping for or is this should have been the norm all these years ago? Because I believe you've got two decades of experience. Yeah, I definitely agree with, uh, with Rafilwe. Um, you know, it has taken this long and it should be uh, the norm because, I mean, you have other airlines that have uh, pioneered this, like uh, Kenya Airways, uh, Ethiopian Airlines. Um, and I think, you know, it, it has taken so long, but I, I really feel the inclusion of government in this uh, should is needed because, you know, you have uh, the pilots that finish at the flying school and then there is no uh, bridging, there's no gap, there's a huge gap between them uh, leaving the flying school and uh, getting into the airline. And, you know, we had South African Express that was a feeder airline that was uh, able to help and advance uh, the pilots in this manner. And unfortunately, with those airlines no longer in the market, it's so difficult for, for pilots mm. to basically uh, acquire the hours that are needed to get into the airline. And so, you know, I think this is where uh, government is needed to, to sort of bridge that gap for, for the guys that are leaving the flying schools. Uh, you, so you, I, I think, honestly, that is why... 
taking so long. Yeah. Sorry, uh, but, sorry, Gareth. No, no, no. Please don't apologise. Not at all. Uh, but you led me very nicely to my next point, and I wanted to get your thoughts. So I'm going to ask Rafilwe uh, the same as well because it's incredibly expensive to get the pilot training. It takes thousands and thousands of hours to even get to the point where you are now. And as you mentioned, now we're minus a few airlines domestically as well. Do you think this is going to hamper yeah. more young black girls wanting A and B having the ability to become captains and first officers? I definitely, I definitely do feel that it will hamper, but I think, you know, there are, there has to be some sort of um, procedures or some sort of programs that are coming up. And that's why I keep hampering on, on, on government's inclusion into this whole process, because um, with the feeder airlines gone, it, it definitely is going to, to hamper in, in the, the um, pilots that are leaving the flying school in gain, on gaining hours. And so a lot of the pilots that are leaving flying schools are flying out of South Africa mm. uh, and they are getting their hours um, out, of, out of South Africa, which is not exactly uh, what a lot of them want to do, but unfortunately calls for it. So um, I definitely think the inclusion of government, NPOs, NGOs in this sort of um, um, issue is, is so pertinent to us. Uh, Rafael, I want to ask you this. Let's talk about uh, the young girls specifically, uh, regardless of race, the young girls. We don't see enough female pilots coming through, uh, especially in South Africa. Why would they want to do it? Where did your dream start? Why do this of all the things I'm sure you could have done? Um, well, for me, it's exposure. I think if, if you're not exposed to this career, if you don't know it exists, then obviously it won't be on a list of choices. Um, well, for me, it started uh, at the age of seven when I got the opportunity to get on a flight deck. It was a South African Airways flight deck. And, and that's where my dream began. And I told myself, this is where I wanted to end up, which I eventually did. But uh, you can only imagine that that little girl that wants to, uh, or that could actually potentially want to end up here, if they're not exposed to these things, then obviously it's not going to be a choice, mm -hmm. you know. And then secondly, even if maybe they are a bit exposed to it, I think it's that encouragement or motivation coming from uh, parents, from teachers, and just from society at large. Mm. And I think if there isn't enough representation of women in general, then of course, then it becomes more difficult for them to try and pursue that career. Uh, I mean, just globally, women, we make up just less than 5% of the pilot population and uh, less than 1% for women of color. So that's why it's very important. And, and Captain Bundler, I'm pressing up very quickly to 8 o'clock headlines. I'm going to ask you just very briefly your thoughts on, on young girls coming through now, as maybe as part of your dream. Why would they want to do it? Just as briefly as you can. Forgive me pushing you on time. Sorry, say that. what was the question again, Gareth? I didn't hear that. I was just asking very briefly, why would a young girl in South Africa want to follow in your footsteps? It's so difficult to do. Just tell them why they, they should be where you are one day. Because you know what, this is the best job in the world. You get to travel everywhere in the world. You get to meet so many people. And it's such a diverse environment. This is the place to be. And I think myself and Rafu are gonna continue championing this, this, uh, this field. And uh, we're gonna try and definitely continue getting more girls to, to try and love aviation. And let's be honest. Women are generally better at everything than men anyway. Yes, as of well. course. So thank you to the both of you uh, for joining us this morning. Captain, <laughs> Captain Annabelle Wundler behind me uh, joining us uh, via Zoom and uh, First Officer Rafilwe uh, joining us uh, as well. And what a wonderful pleasure to have both of you. Thank you so uh, much. I look Gareth. forward to flying you thank one day you. with you one day when I'm uh, no longer scared of flying. But maybe I'll be on the flight with you. I appreciate you coming in thank you so uh, to much, join Gareth. us. We are heading up very quickly to 8 o'clock. Your headlines on the way next.